so today's video is a bit of a catch up really, so I'm going to show you a few things that I've made recently. When I say show, I'm going to add some photos because they, they were all gifts, so I've given them away. Um, I probably could have held on to a few of them for a bit longer, but I just thought I, they're done, I'm going to post them off so that they arrive on time. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is the McCall's 7783, which I acquired recently from a local charity shop. It was published in the 60s, 1965 is the copyright. So with this one, I made view C, which is a top and shorts, because I thought that would be nice for my niece. Um, and also it's in the correct size for her. I did manage, I think my mum managed to measure her briefly when she last visited her. So I did double check that um, the measurements matched her. So yeah, it's actually a really interesting make because although it looks really simple, and to be fair, it probably didn't take that long, it's just that I did short bursts of sewing, so it, it still probably took me at least a week, if not two. And I think I, after I'd cut it out, I didn't actually make it for a while, because other stuff was on. But anyway, I got back around to it, and made it. it. I was really happy with the results, and actually it's a really good skill builder, so um, there are some more common things, so you know, you add facings to the neckline and the armholes. You also, it was a really good practice for me in insert, in, inserting a zip, because you had to add one to the back. An interesting point to note, actually, is that it said to put the zip on after you've added the facing at the back. I don't know if it's because you're working with such small pieces or not, um, because normally when I've done a pattern, you normally have the if you've got a basing at the back, you'd put it on over the zip so, you know, the zip wouldn't brush against your skin or be on show, even on the inside. So, yeah, I'm not completely sure about that, but um, I can only assume it's because it's easier if it's on the outside and perhaps because it was quite a small zip. Um, that might be why. Um, yeah, so again, I thought, yeah, it's really simple, but actually on the shorts, it's got a really nice detail. I don't know. You can see it. I'll try and put the line drawing on it, but basically there are two pleats at the front. Um, so you've got a pleat on either side of the front of the shorts. And then it's a flat waistband that you attach on the front above the pleats. And the back of the waistband has elastic in it. So I thought that was a really nice detail. I have no idea whether the elastic is the right um, length for my niece. That's the only problem without having your model there to fit it at the time. So. Um, but my mum's up um, with my sister at the moment, so hopefully if it doesn't fit, my mum will be there to adjust it. So yeah, that's the first one. I was really happy with that make, and yeah, I posted that off straight away. The other make I did recently um, was from the Edwards Menagerie book, um, which is by Kerry Lord, who works in partnership with Toft. So in this book, um, basically when my first niece was born, I made, the, I made Emma the bunny. For her, so I thought um, for my second niece, I would make the next pattern along the cat. So I made Alexander, the Russian blue cat. Similar to when I made the bunny pattern in this book, it's nice and simple. The great thing about making crocheted toys is it just feels a bit safer for a, a baby because you're not relying on your own sewing up skills, if that makes sense. So I was happy that. Yeah, basically you stop it as you go along, so when it starts, um, and then you decrease and it narrows. So all the sewing up bits on my part was the face, um, and attaching the ears and limbs and tail. So it just feels a little bit safer in that respect. And also um, you use double knit, but with, I think it's a three millimeter hook, so it's, it's quite tight as well, so there aren't gaps. Um, and obviously I, I bought some actual toy stuffing to use. Um, sometimes if I'm just making a mascot or that for someone older, I'd just use, I'd use an old pillow and stuff with that, but I did buy proper toy stuffing for this one. So yeah, it was a lovely simple make. Um, the great thing about the Edwards Menagerie book, so this is the first one, but there are a few more books out now. Um, and the other books are a bit more thematic. I think there's one dedicated to dog breeds. Um, I'm not sure about the others. But yeah, it's really handy actually. There's lots of advice in the back of the book about adding the face details, how this can change the personality of the animal you're making. Um, notes of how to stuff the animal at the end um, as you go along as well. So with 
with these toys, you only actually put a bit of stuffing in the, the base of the limbs, so where the little um, wider bit is, um, and that kind of adds to its particular charm. So yeah, the book's really good, so as long as you do read those other pages to help you, um, you know, sew it up and stuff it appropriately, um, it turns out really well. So yeah, I was happy with that, and that got posted off as well. And um, the third project I was going to mention is that I made some doll clothes. So my elder niece, she's um, going to get a new doll for her birthday. So my sister suggested that I could make some dolls clothes to go with it. So I'm really hoping they fit because again, without having the actual doll there to hand, it is a bit of a gamble, but I just followed the um, guidance on the back of this pattern as to whether it would fit the particular doll. So I've gone for the medium size, the small, medium and large. And I've got a very tatty version again. I think this is from a charity shop, but I don't know when I got it. So I'll try and find a better picture from online um, <laughs> that shows the front cover a bit better. So with this pattern, again, um, it was a quite nice skill building pattern just because you are making everything in miniature. Um, so that was really nice. It's also a brilliant stash buster because I managed to use some quite small bits of remnant fabrics I had in my stash to make these three sets, which I probably couldn't have even made clothes for my niece out of them. So yeah, I was really happy with that. So um, yeah, this is the Simplicity 5554. It says sewing patterns for dummies, but I don't know, I wouldn't say it's any easier to read than a regular commercial pattern. It seemed pretty much the same, so I don't know why it's for dummies unless it came with the Sewing for Dummies book or I'm not really sure um, what the history is there. I think it's a, a fairly old pattern, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure I've got the uh, copyright on here. Oh no, uh, so it's 2003. It was really nice to make, as I mentioned, so the main skill I practiced on this one, it was pretty straightforward overall, but you used bias binding on the neck opening, which I thought was a really nice way to practice doing that. It was a bit tricky around um, the shoulder part. Oh yeah, that's another point. The um, the shirt was raglan, raglan shape as well, which was quite nice. But yeah, so you used bias binding um, to cover the raw edge on the neck seam. So when you you know you stitch it down, so all the bias binding is on the inside, um, which is a good skill to practice because obviously um, there are a lot of adult sewing dressmaking patterns which use that technique. The other skill was on the panties, on the legs, you used elastic to gather it, um, which is something I've never done on a pattern before. So it was quite nice to learn that. Um, and also it's just nice to do it because it had quarter of an inch seam allowances. So um, I used the overlocker for any seams that weren't, you know, that I wasn't hemming and that. So it meant that I didn't have to cut off any fabric um, so yeah, it's a very economical pattern and yeah, it's just a good way to practice and um, some of your dressmaking skills really. So the final project that I was going to mention is that I made a penguin towel and toy set um, for my, my younger niece. So I got this from the Made for Baby book, which I've shown you my attempts of uh, tracing the templates with the sketchograph. So this pattern, I, I really loved it, which is why I decided to make it. I actually had the pattern in a magazine but I just couldn't find where the template page was so I could I had to get the book out of the library to get the templates to make the toy pattern and I think yeah it's just like for the facial features on the towel for the penguin on that part so it's a really nice make it's pretty simple the instructions are straightforward the only criticism that I would mention on this pattern is that you had to draw out the the hood section um, so they show you how to lay it out on your towel and they tell you that two of the edges are 29, I think it was 29 centimetres long. I don't think they told you how wide the other, the other um, length of the triangle was, but they didn't actually highlight that it was a right angle between the two equal sides. I guess they might be assuming that you'll use your logic that it's going to go into the corner of the square bit of towel that you're going to cut out. But because they had it lying on the pattern so that it wasn't in the corner of the towel, which would be the most economic way to cut it, 
perhaps they were thinking about the nap, I'm not sure. But I just found that um, threw me off a bit because they could have just put a little right angle sign in there just to clarify that it definitely was, um, you know, a 90 degree angle between those two lengths. The other thing was um, the, because you had to draw out circles for the eyes for both penguins. And I think it said a one centimetre circle and a two and a half centimetre circle or something similar like that. But um, I think they could have just simply put that it was a one centimetre in diameter circle because I know it probably would have made it crazily small if it was the circumference or that, but it was just a little bit misleading and I think that would have helped. What I ended up doing because I couldn't find, um, I couldn't find my compass, uh, I used a one pound coin. I found an old pound coin that we hadn't um, taken to the bank um, to get one of the new 12 sided ones. Um, and I used a two pound coin to make the bigger set of penguin eyes so it works out okay in the end and they were roughly the right size. I think the smaller eyes ended up being slightly bigger and the bigger eyes were slightly smaller but there were only, you know, a couple of millimetres in it if that. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with it. I ended up hand sewing the bias on. With the bias binding I machine sewed um, the first side on but then I hand stitched the other side over. Um, just because I do have a bias binding foot, but I find with toweling fabric, if the towel's too thick, it just it just doesn't cooperate that well. So I just thought it would have a nicer finish anyway if I hand stitched it on there. Okay, so um, that's it for now. So obviously, um, if you are looking for any particularly interesting patterns to make for a baby or toddler, these are some. Um, I'd probably recommend all of them to be honest. They're all fairly straightforward. Um, there are some good stash busters there. And yeah, I've really enjoyed making them all actually. And yeah, they've all been posted off and ready to be given as gifts. Thanks for watching.